Lexi and welcome back to another video with me. I am so excited to be with all of you today. Today's video is all about healthy tips and how to live a healthier and more balanced lifestyle. Um, I have my top five tips that I want to share with you guys of things that I've incorporated since I've made the change towards a more healthy, active, and fit lifestyle, which was probably in 2012, 2013 is when that transition started to happen. But before we get into the tips, I want to kind of go over a few misconceptions that people have over what being healthy means, especially because of social media, YouTube, everything I've seen. People think that being healthy means a lot of complicated things and or a quick fix and none of those things are true. Reaching your fitness goals, becoming a more fit person and just achieving a more balanced lifestyle is a slow and gradual process. And almost everything in life is like this and I think we all need to learn to practice more patience with ourselves and how our behavior changes and our habits. Um, so that's the first thing I wanna say is that it just takes a long time and it's totally okay if you go through peaks and valleys and if it's not perfect from the beginning and you go through a little bit of failing and having to pick yourself back up. Secondly, I wanted to say that there's a lot of conceptions that there's all this like fancy stuff you have to do to be healthy. Superfoods, doing crazy things like sauna, red light therapy, you're really like the top 5% of what puts you over the top. A lot of us really need to focus on the basics and really simple tips and tricks and really incorporating those things into our lives to really see the biggest difference. So I just think that you really need to nail down the basics first. And that's also how I teach all my classes, like foundations first and then you get in, you know, to the whole deal. So let's get into the video. I'm going to show you guys and talk about what my top five healthy tips are. And yeah, let's do it. All right. Tip number one simply moving. I know this is something that is so easy. Everyone's like, yeah, duh, I have to exercise. But seeing movement as a part of your lifestyle more so than just getting a workout in. A lot of us, if we're busy, we're moms, we're students, whatever it may be, it's hard to fit in an hour, two hours, three hours of exercise in. That is unrealistic. So I want you to think about movement as being a part of your lifestyle. Walking to the coffee shop instead of um, driving there. Going to the beach, going on hikes with friends. Instead of meeting up with a friend for coffee, can you ask them to go on a walk with you or find a jogging partner? Make it a part of your life and really incorporate it into your life. For me, I don't say that any one kind of movement is gonna make you the most fit. You have to find what works for your body and what you actually enjoy. There is so much of like workout trend out there where we wanna follow the trend. So whether that's um, bodybuilding or Pilates or yoga and like aerobics, that is like an old trend, but whatever is out there right now, don't listen to them. Honestly, just do what works for your body. What feels best, what gives you the best results is what you're gonna stick with longer term. So for me, I love trail running. That's a new thing I've discovered. I, I've always liked hiking, but since moving to California, I've been getting into trail running. And it's something that's really new and fun and different. Um, but beyond that, in the past, and what I'm still doing now is marathon running and Pilates and strength training. So Tip number two is all about food. So food is so complicated and I don't want to touch on everything here about my thoughts on food. Eating healthy is a huge part of living a healthy lifestyle. And that simply means cutting out things that don't make you feel good and aren't fuel for your body on a regular basis. It doesn't mean you don't, you don't eat them at all, but you just don't eat them with every single meal. So for me, I have a huge sweet tooth. I love sweets. I love baked goods specifically croissants, a chocolate croissant is what will get me. That's like the peak, the peak type of food I can eat in a quarter. Now, I don't eat those every day. I maybe eat them once a month. I do have chocolate almost every night. You know, I, I have granola, I have almond butter. I really try to stay balanced with my meals, but I want to make good choices. So I'm going to show you guys a few of my favorite meal ideas um, right now in this video so you can follow along. I am vegan and that's for ethical and environmental reasons 
pretty much solely. I do think you can be healthy being vegan. You can be just unhealthy being vegan. And the same if you're an omnivore, a pescatarian, a vegetarian, whatever it may be. I like to focus on whole foods, foods that I genuinely actually enjoy. You can sense the theme, right? Actually like do things that you like, that's essentially it. And notice how it fuels your body and how you feel after, if you feel groggy or tired, and how it makes you feel the next day as well. So I'll show you guys a few of my favorite recipes here. And I also am gonna link a blog post I put up a few days ago of all of my favorite vegan recipes. All of them are very plant-based whole foods, so you don't have to worry about them um, being necessarily unhealthy. But generally, I just try to limit sweets and um, things like chips and french fries to more of an irregular basis. They're definitely not cut out at all. Um, and yeah, that's tip number two, focus on whole foods. So let's get into the recipe. These are all the ingredients you need. I'm gonna link the recipe link down below so you can just see the full thing because I did not make this recipe. It's called The Stew, um, and it's a New York Times Ellison Roman recipe. So. You start with this. This is half an onion, um, about a thumb-sized peeled, like diced up ginger, and then four or five cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna saute all of this in olive oil, salt, and black pepper. So I just sauteed everything, and I added in the spices. It's turmeric, red pepper, salt, and pepper. A key here is to always make sure you salt every layer of your food. So right now, this is just the aromatics. And yeah, I'm gonna let this sit for just a little bit, turn the heat down just a little actually. I'm on medium high. Um, and just really make sure you actually cook your aromatics here. A lot of people I see, it, it doesn't get like caramelized enough. You want this like deep dark color that will deglaze once you add in the liquid. Then maybe five to eight minutes here of just cooking the chickpeas down, adding in water if I need to. As you can tell, there's a lot of browning here. And after this, essentially what you want here is them to be crispy and a little bit broken down. So what she recommends is actually breaking them down with the back of a spoon just like this um, because it adds more starch and it thickens the stew. This is affectionately called hashtag the stew. So you want it to be stewy, right? So yeah, break it down just like this, and then I'll get back to you guys when I start adding liquid. Alrighty, so we are at the easy part of this recipe. I've added in the liquid, so I changed the proportions of the liquid just a little bit because I don't like adding two cans of coconut milk, mostly because I almost never have two cans in the house. So I added one can of coconut milk and then the equivalent amount of broth that two cans would have, but the recipe calls for two cups of water and two cans of coconut milk. So I just switched that up a little bit. I think it ends up being like three and a half or four cups of water and one cup of coconut milk. So the next part of this recipe is really easy. You simply just let it simmer for 30 to 35 minutes. Well, hello everyone. The stew is done. It's been on for about 45 minutes or so. I realized it was a little too salty. It went a little heavy handed on the bouillon. So I added a little extra water and some extra chickpeas because of that. And then I stirred in my whole head of kale. And this is it basically. So it gets super thick as you can tell. And then I just serve it with brown rice and then some fresh cilantro on top from my herb garden. And that's basically it. That's gonna be dinner for tonight and it's a super easy recipe, super filling, super flavorful, really easy for people who even don't know how to cook. Um, and that's that, check it out. Welcome to my bedroom. Tip number three is sleep, which is why we're in here. Sleeping is so important, not only for recovery and for mental clarity, but for really your whole well-being and for you not to be a cranky, crabby person. We've all been there where we've stayed up all night for whatever reason it may be. Maybe you were out partying, maybe you were just reading a really good book. That one is definitely more me. <laughs> and you just didn't want to go to sleep. And then you only get five or six hours of sleep and you regret it the next day. You have a pounding headache. You wish you could take a nap, but you're overtired and you can't sleep. That is always me. So I prioritize sleep. I try to get at least seven hours of sleep a night, usually averaging between seven and a half and eight hours of sleep. Honestly, quarantine has made me a better sleeper. I haven't had to wake up as early in the morning and I've been able to sleep way more, which has been a blessing. I'm so happy for that. So please sleep. It is an integral part of a balanced, healthy lifestyle. 
being healthy isn't just about working out, being shredded, and eating a lot of food, right? It's about this holistic lifestyle of feeling your best every single day, feeling accomplished, feeling vibrant and energized. So get your sleep, that's all I can say. Tip number four, we're almost there. It's planning. So I have a little planner. This guy's from Target. She's nothing special. But I also use Google Calendar as well, and I'll show you guys what that looks like additionally. But I love planning things because I feel like it helps keep me on track. Um, yes, you can totally like go with the flow, from spirit vibes, like that is great. But when it comes to healthy living and fitting in all the workouts and cooking and all the things you need to do to live that healthy lifestyle, planning and planning is an essential and it's key. So, I'll show you guys what I do here with my planner. There's a few different sections in here, and I'm not gonna run through everything, but I'll give you an example of how I prep my meals. So we go grocery shopping on the weekends, usually to a store called Sprouts, which is a West Coast store. We used to just go to Whole Foods on the East Coast. Um, and then sometimes we'll go to Costco and Target and other places, but mostly just Sprouts. Um, and I will make a little meal prep. So I'll just kind of write what Realistically, I'm gonna make for lunch and dinner. Breakfast is kind of the same-ish every day, so I don't add those in necessarily. And then if I wanna make anything special, so here I have homemade granola and black bean brownies. And then when it comes to workouts, I do the same thing. So I'll show you that as well. So this is my workout schedule for this week. And as you can see, it's a mix of running, Pilates, um, strength training. I'm going to F45 this week reformer classes and also mat classes um, and trail running. So it's kind of a mix of everything and this is an example of how I would organize it and I'll just tick it off as it happens. Now the last tip I have is not being too rigid. Like I said, living a healthy lifestyle is all about finding balance, finding what works for you, what you enjoy, and also what makes you feel good. So like I just said, I make all those plans and a lot of times they don't work out. For if I have a modeling gig for some reason, if I didn't get enough sleep, if I have to cook something, if we have to go out somewhere, there's a myriad of different reasons as to why it might not work out. And I've had to, for a while I was almost like obsessive about getting everything done. Now I have to just accept, you know, life happens and it's about the cumulative rather than what's happening just today. So I try to focus on the long term and my habits rather than, oh, I messed up today and it didn't work out. So that's my last tip for you guys. Just don't be too rigid with yourself. Be gentle and really think of this as a long term game. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and these tips were helpful for you um, in kind of my mindset around exercise and healthy lifestyle. If you guys have any requests for future videos, definitely let me know. You can leave those down below. I'll put my socials here and here if you want to check them out and uh, hang out with me on a more daily basis. And that's all. I'll see you guys all soon. Have a good one.